I want to bring in Deborah Opry. She is a defense attorney. Um, and Deborah, I guess the issue, I guess the crux of what the jury had to determine, they had to determine whether or not Dr. Conrad Murray was criminally uh, negligent. You watched the closings last week. How did you think Mr. Chernoff did? Uh, he did okay. He was working with the best he had. I think the uh, repetitive, and I had said this prior to that he should use these words, the repetitive use of error in judgment is not gross negligence. I think that was the strongest argument. However, you have to look at the jury deliberations. They basically went a day and a morning. And if we can tell by the uh, details of the evidence, because this was in many respects a malpractice case bordering on gross negligence which made it criminal uh, I think they had a, the jury had a complete grasp of the evidence and those markers that Sonny had mentioned uh, were basically I think for the jury instructions which at most are very difficult to understand and I think that was what was uh, their issues in the deliberation as far as the closing arguments for the prosecution we don't need to say any further how wonderful it was he kept it like a road map and a table of contents and he basically came in and said, here's the evidence, this is what we proved, this is gross negligence. Turn off to wrap this uh, dialogue up. Uh, I, I really think at some point in time they should have had more witnesses in there, challenged more of the evidence, hmm. but they were working with what they had. And just quickly, Deborah, when you look at this, it's just the single count involuntary manslaughter, if, big if, if he's convicted, what kind of sentence could he be facing? It's, what is it, a max four years? Well, he's a maximum of four years, but the big dilemma seems to be uh, what's going on in California now with the new rules with uh, house arrest. Uh, will he do some time in county? Probably. Uh, will he have some time as house arrest near the tail end? I think so. But hmm. let there be no mistake. If uh, Conrad Murray is sentenced, his life as he knows it is over. He loses his license, and that hmm. is and has been his biggest concern. I wanted to make one comment about the factor, the wow factor. Sure. I was with Katherine Jackson and her family during the sexual molestation case, and I can tell you what they're going through right now. They are on the edge of their seat saying, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Michael will have justice. And uh, my heart goes out to the Jackson family, and this is a very difficult time for him, uh, for them. It won't bring Michael back, but at least it can put everything to rest with that family. They've had the highs and lows of any other family in entertainment, and uh, it's what a story that family has. What a story, and as you mentioned, you know, the family. And, you know, we saw Joe, we saw Catherine, Michael Jackson's parents arriving there. We know Jermaine is there. I'm sure certainly uh, other members of the Jackson family f will appear for, for the this monumentous day for them uh, as the verdict has been reached, but certainly not lost in all of this. Also, Michael Jackson's young children uh, and, and certainly yes. the, the impact all of this has had and will forever have on them. You stand by. I want to go to Deborah Oprey, who is also standing by. She's a defense attorney, but interestingly, Deborah, you were explaining to me not too long ago that you worked very closely with Katherine Jackson uh, during during the previous trial. I'm just curious. Um, you know, you know them. You know her. You know the family. What must be going through their minds right now? Have you been at all in contact with them? Um, tell me about the family. The, the family right now is very together and they are bonded in the justice for their son. Uh, they need to put this behind them. They will not get their son back. And Catherine, uh, my, my heartache, because she was like a West Coast mom to me hmm. uh, during that case. And uh, my feeling is that Catherine's years on this earth, they, she's had a lot of heartache, a lot of joy. And it's just very sad to me to think that this had to end in her later years that she had to have this kind of tragedy and I just I pray for them uh, what are they going through uh, they're gonna wait for the verdict I think it's going to come down favorably for them they will go home they will get on with their lives and her daughters Rebe, Janet, Latoya uh, they're they're good daughters and I just I say God bless them and my prayers will always be with them as far as the trial itself it's been a long uh, duration. Uh, Michael's kids, 
Uh, as I said, they would never be in the courtroom. They didn't belong there. They don't belong there. They have to look to tomorrow because they have a good future ahead of them. And also, I don't know if you were listening to my conversation with Dr. Drew Pinsky, but he was speaking specifically about the children and certainly um, the, the members of the jury, the members of the jury, the seven men, the five women, that, that couldn't have been too far from mine in determining uh, you know, an outcome for, for Dr. Murray. They have to think of the you, little ones. You're, you're at... You're correct that they looked at the children, but I am telling you that the key factor in this was Katherine Jackson sitting in that courtroom and his siblings. Mm -hmm. When you look at the dynamics of the family, it doesn't matter what people out there in the public said that they fought, they bickered. That is a tight-knit family, and they always have been, they always will be, and the jury factored in that element of a loving family from the mother and the father to the siblings to Michael's children. So the jury sat in that room knowing that Michael Jackson was a man who didn't have to die. He had too much to live for. Deborah, thank you. Uh